In early September 2025, the Australian Army undertook an ambitious exercise designed to test one of the most demanding aspects of modern military mobility, deploying heavy armour at sea. Over two days in Townsville, Queensland, the Army's newly acquired M1A2 SEPV-3 Abrams main battle tanks, together with a range of engineering support vehicles, were loaded and tested aboard Royal Australian Navy vessels to evaluate how effectively they could be integrated into amphibious operations. The event marked the first time that these platforms, central to the nation's modernization program, were put through such a rigorous maritime assessment. It also underscored Australia's determination to create a force capable of projecting power across the Indo-Pacific region. The acquisition of 75 Abrams tanks under Project Land 907 Phase 2 has been one of the most high-profile defense procurements in recent years. For Canberra, the arrival of these vehicles represents a decisive upgrade to its armored formations, combining firepower, protection, and digital capabilities far beyond what earlier platforms could offer. Yet simply owning cutting-edge machines is not enough. The challenge lies in ensuring that they can be deployed rapidly and reliably to the locations where they might be needed most. In an era when the Australian Defence Force increasingly emphasises joint force operations, the ability to load and move such vehicles from naval platforms is critical to operational success. The exercise at Townsville was designed with this goal in mind. Soldiers, engineers, and naval personnel work together to practice embarking and disembarking the heavy vehicles onto and from Navy landing craft and amphibious ships. For the Abrams, which weighs more than 73 tons, this was a particularly significant test. Ship stability, ramp angles, and deck stress points all had to be carefully monitored to ensure safety during loading operations. While the tank itself is a formidable weapon on land, its size and weight introduce unique complexities when it must be moved over water. The Australian Army and Navy needed to confirm that their vessels and procedures could handle these demands without compromising readiness. In addition to the tanks, the trials involved specialized support equipment acquired through the same U.S. foreign military sales package. The M1150 assault breacher vehicle, the M1074 Joint Assault Bridge, and the M88A2 Hercules Recovery Vehicle each play a vital role in enabling armored units to overcome obstacles, bridge gaps, and recover disabled machines in the field. Bringing these into maritime operations is equally important, since deploying tanks without the means to sustain or support them limits their utility. The Townsville exercise therefore provided a comprehensive picture of how Australia's heavy armour package as a whole could function in joint amphibious operations. Observers noted that most systems performed within expectations, but not without challenges. The joint assault bridge and assault breacher, for instance, demanded more time and precision in handling due to their length and complex configurations. Issues such as ramp compatibility, securing mechanisms, and embarkation timelines had to be reconsidered in light of these difficulties. Although none of these problems proved insurmountable, they highlighted the importance of refining procedures to ensure that armored forces can be deployed quickly even under less-than-ideal sea conditions. In future operations, delays in loading could become a serious vulnerability, making it crucial that both Army and Navy personnel perfect their methods now. From a technical perspective, the M1A2 SEPV-3 Abrams brings substantial improvements over its predecessors. Enhanced armor protection, advanced power generation, and modern digital systems make it far more survivable and effective in high-intensity combat. Yet those very strengths amplify the logistical hurdles. A 73-ton tank cannot simply be rolled onto a landing craft without extensive planning, and its safe deployment requires precise coordination across multiple teams. The Townsville trials revealed the need for closer integration between Army ground crews and naval specialists, particularly in terms of communication and risk assessment. 
differing interpretations of acceptable safety margins under changing sea states became apparent, underscoring the necessity of joint training to harmonize procedures. For Australia's defence planners, the exercise carried meaning beyond immediate technical adjustments. It represented an important signal of the country's growing emphasis on expeditionary capability. The Indo-Pacific remains a region of increasing geopolitical tension, with contested sea lanes, potential flashpoints, and the constant need for rapid crisis response. Canberra recognizes that in such an environment, the ability to move heavy armor by sea is not optional but essential. Whether responding to a military confrontation, a regional instability, or even a humanitarian emergency, the defense force must be capable of placing robust ground forces ashore with speed and confidence. The integration of the Abrams tanks into amphibious doctrine brings Australia closer to that objective. In this sense, the Townsville trials can be seen as both a validation and a rehearsal. They confirm that the Army's new equipment can be physically accommodated aboard Navy platforms such as the Canberra-class landing helicopter docks, but they also served as practice for the human dimension of joint operations. Soldiers and sailors alike confronted the practical realities of operating together under pressure, from aligning equipment on crowded decks to managing communication in noisy, high-risk environments. The lessons learned will feed directly into future exercises, with additional sea deployment drills already planned for early 2026. These next iterations will aim to stress the system further, introducing more difficult sea states and full combat offload scenarios to test the limits of readiness. The strategic implications of this development are significant. By proving that heavy armor can be deployed from naval vessels, Australia adds a powerful new dimension to its deterrence posture. Tanks like the M1A2 SCP V3 are not merely symbolic assets, they represent a capability to conduct sustained operations on hostile shores, to hold ground, and to influence events decisively once deployed. When paired with combat engineering vehicles that can clear obstacles, bridge terrain, and recover damaged assets, the armored force becomes a complete package capable of independent action. This gives Canberra the ability to respond flexibly to crises across the Indo-Pacific, from high-end warfare to stabilization missions and disaster relief. Of course, challenges remain. The corrosive maritime environment poses long-term risks to the lifespan of heavy equipment, and constant vigilance will be required to maintain vehicles exposed to saltwater conditions. The loading and securing techniques must be continually refined to minimize risk during rapid deployments. And most importantly, the cultural shift toward joint operations must be embedded deeply within both the Army and Navy. Technology can solve only so much, the real test of expeditionary warfare lies in human coordination, decision-making, and the ability to adapt under pressure. The Townsville trials revealed that while Australia has made significant progress, there is still work to be done before its forces can achieve seamless integration at sea. Nonetheless, the successful execution of these first sea transportability trials represents a milestone. It confirms that the investment in new armor is not just about battlefield firepower but also about mobility, flexibility, and strategic reach. As future exercises build upon this foundation, Australia is steadily constructing a force designed for the realities of its regional environment. A nation dependent on secure sea lanes and partnerships across vast distances cannot afford to neglect amphibious capability. By marrying the brute strength of the Abrams with the mobility of naval platforms, Canberra is shaping a defense force capable of operating effectively across both land and sea. The Townsville exercise, therefore, stands as a testament to Australia's evolving defense strategy. It is not merely a technical event or a symbolic milestone, but part of a larger vision of creating a joint, expeditionary, and responsive force ready for the unpredictable challenges of the Indo-Pacific. Whether facing rising regional tensions, responding to sudden crises, 
or providing relief after natural disasters, the Australian Defence Force is now one step closer to delivering decisive capability from the sea to the shore.